Hey guys, it's Anna and welcome to my channel. Today we're going to be talking about top vanilla perfumes. And I've done this video before, but it's been some time now since I filmed that and I have discovered so many more vanilla fragrances that I absolutely love. In fact, I have so many, it's not even going to all fit into this video. So eventually I'm going to have to do a part three. And if you haven't seen that first video after this, Give it, give it a peek. This first fragrance is one of the newest in my collection. I, I was trying to refrain from purchasing this because it is sadly limited edition, but I was experiencing serious FOMO. So many people were talking about it and I bought into it, but I don't regret it. This is House of Siage Hufflepuff. They recently had a 30% off sale. If you don't know already, House of Siage is constantly running sales. Do not buy House of Siage for full retail price. Wait for a sale. This was a partial blind buy for me. When I bought Whispers of Truth, it came with like a scented card in the package with Hufflepuff. So I had never tested it on my skin, but just from that little scented card, smelled delightful. And with all y'all posting about it, I couldn't help myself. Anyway, here we are and I love it. This is for the people out there who like their sweet gourmand fragrances. So I do have to be in the mood for something sweet when I pull for this. It feels so just fun, like free spirited, puts me in a good mood, very girly, creamy, fluffy. This to me smells like a very light, airy vanilla coconut cupcake with like a buttercream delicious like homemade frosting keyword with a little bit of a fresh lemon if you are someone who isn't into citrusy vanillas this isn't a harsh citrus it's very nice and it just blends beautifully with the coconut and the vanilla this is not giving you dark lemon lemon zest like an intense blast of citrus but adds a really beautiful light freshness to this overall like very sweet whipped sugared airy vanilla perfume i personally don't get the other notes it's just lemon coconut and vanilla for me but i really like this in fact this was my scent of the day the other day i went out with eric to meet up with a couple friends and before i even approached the table one of them was like oh you smell so good very likable perfume i would just say be into your sweet fragrances. This overall has a very lively, young character to it. And this will make a great layering fragrance as well. And I get about six hours with a moderate projection. I bought this fully for the notes. I could not resist. Um, not because I'm a Hufflepuff. For those of you who care, can you guess what house I am? I'll give you a moment. Slytherin. When I first took that quiz years ago and I got Slytherin, I was like, but now I fully embrace it. I'm like, yes, I am. Moving along, we are going to talk about such a beautiful, delicate, powdery, simple musky vanilla, but it is nothing short of addictive. This is Eau de Italy Morn to Dusk. This is such a pretty girl vanilla fragrance. I honestly am just getting vanilla and musk but this is not boring to me. I think about this scent, I crave it. It's beautiful on its own. It's amazing for layering. If you want like a soft, dainty, ethereal kind of vanilla perfume, this is one to check out. If you enjoy Bath & Body Works Vanilla Bean Noel, they don't smell the same, but I'm just saying that if you like that, I'm very confident that you will like this as well. This is more refined, that's more creamy, this is more powdery, airy, but I will get a vibe. I will get a vibe of that. I've said this before, but it, it is very much so giving me Sugar Plum Fairy from the Nutcracker vibes. Like this is definitely like a ballerina fairy type of fragrance in my opinion. Longevity isn't the best, unfortunately. I get about four hours with this with an intimate sillage, but the scent is so lovely that it's worth it to me regardless and I just overspray. Moisturize, hit your clothes, overspray, the trio of rules when it comes to fragrance. A complete powerhouse of a fragrance. Like, no joke, this is one of the most intense in my entire collection. This is Lorenzo Pazzaia Van Ecstasy X. This is vanilla on steroids. They have, um, there's a shit ton of vanilla in here, different types of vanilla. Please reference the list of notes. And although this is 
most definitely a vanilla centered fragrance. This still has a uniqueness to it. This smells unlike any other vanilla fragrance that I've tried. This is incredibly rich, deep, decadent, and it almost has just a little hint of a chocolatey quality to it, specifically like an Irish cream note. I absolutely get that. So for all of you Irish cream cold foam lovers, this is a must try. There's just a little tiny hint of a boozy quality, a little touch of that oud just to deepen this fragrance overall, but you're not going to smell this and think like, ooh, oud. So if you're sensitive to that note, you're not into woody scents, still give this a try if you're interested. And then there's a rich, deep caramel note. This is insane. It's on the one hand giving me the deep Irish cream Bailey's vanilla vibe as well as like a vanilla bean ice cream experience, but melted, it's warm. This is for those of you who do not play around when it comes to vanilla and beast mode fragrances. This will last truly all day, has insane projection sillage. This next one is a beautiful unisex fragrance option. This is Byredo Vini Antique. I find this to be so romantic, frankly. This fragrance tells a story to me. Like it feels like a bit of history. It has this rich aged vanilla vibe with the wood and the amber, almost like this dark vanilla has been sitting and aging in these rich wooden barrels. The amber quality is very warm, smooth, and there's a bit of a syrup-like quality coming from this boozy plum. It is gorgeous. I don't know, this smells like a dark romance, a Lana Del Rey song, love letters that are being kept in this old wooden box. Such a beautiful, deep, woody, amber vanilla. I get really good performance with this one, about 12 hours with a moderate projection. This next one I cannot recommend enough. This is one of my top two from the brand, Ex Nihilo The Irreverence. This is one of the most high quality, refined vanilla caramel gourmands you can get. Like you like your gourmands, you like it sweet, but you want something next level. You're getting that elevated niche quality. This is at the heart, as I said, caramel and vanilla, but it also starts out with an exotic saffron, um, sexy pink pepper bringing in that spice. It's so sexy, incredibly intriguing. And the longer this sits on your skin, the more addictive it gets, the more sweet, indulgent, intoxicating. We also have tonka bean. So it does simplify from the opening that pink pepper and saffron does die down the longer this sits on your skin. But the way this warms up, like I keep going back to this, I can't get enough of it. Absolutely ridiculous how good this smells. Like immediately when I tried this, I was like, I need it. I need it. It's incredibly warm, enveloping, and as usual, when it comes to their deeper fragrances at least, this has great performance. Long-lasting fragrance, I'd say about 10 hours with a moderate projection. Another caramel vanilla, but this is a caramel vanilla musk. It's been trending everywhere. None other than Giardini di Toscana Bianco Latte. This will suit absolutely anyone that enjoys this kind of scent profile. Young to more mature people who are beginners in their, you know, fragrance experience, as well as the niche lovers who have a big collection. This is so good. This is an incredibly rich, high quality vanilla fragrance. The way this warms up your new skin, absolute magic. The way that that pairs with the musk, it's like a cocooning, fluffy, cozy musk, has this overall whipped feeling. The trail that this leaves in the air is insane. It just, it lingers. You will be in a cloud of Bianco Latte. It is so warm and cozy. And although this is like a richly crafted gourmand, this is something you can wear year round because of this overall lightweight feel that it has. This is where it's at. If you just want to smell purely 
addictive. And this is an absolute layering staple as well in your collection, in my opinion. Okay. This next fragrance is a new one in my collection and I absolutely love it. This is Burberry Goddess. I went to Sephora recently and I was spraying like all the new fragrances on test strips and I kept coming back to this one. I was like, oh my gosh, that is so beautiful. And the longer it sat on the paper, just the better it got. It was so addictive. I couldn't stop smelling it. So I bought the travel size, went through half of it, and then I had to get a bottle. I will say this is a more simplistic vanilla perfume. So if you are looking for something uh, very unique, something more complex, then this probably won't be for you. But if you enjoy your vanillas and you just want an overall beautiful addictive vanilla that has an elegant vibe to it I would check this out now before even testing this I saw that this had a prominent vanilla caviar no and I was like am I about to experience some marine like sea creature of a vanilla fragrance I had never seen that note before so I was ready to be smelling vanilla and fish eggs to my delight I discovered that that is in fact not what vanilla caviar is. I looked it up and I will recite to you the definition for any of you who also did not know what vanilla caviar was. It is made up of the seeds and pulp of pure Madagascar bourbon vanilla beans, which are scraped from the inside of the pods to deliver the exotic flavor of vanilla. So essentially it is the black part, the inside of the vanilla pod, and it looks similar to caviar because it's made up of these little black round seeds a learning moment this is a beautiful lavender vanilla fragrance i don't personally pick up the cacao you might i just pick up a tiny hint of the ginger the vanilla that's used in here has an element of smelling like the top of a creme brulee to me that like torched caramelized topping it's warm and toasty but those gourmand elements are toned down made to be more sophisticated and cozy with this addition of a lavender note and i have seen comparisons to Guerlain's Mont Guerlain. I have both the original and the intense. I personally really disagree. Mont Guerlain comes off far more floral and also definitely has a more predominant lavender presence where that plays more of a supporting role in Burberry Goddess. So if lavender isn't your favorite note, don't let that stop you from trying this if you're interested. It just adds a really beautiful cozy, comforting touch. The fragrance just dials back the sweetness of the vanilla a bit. I think it's absolutely beautiful. And this is actually the first Burberry fragrance I've ever fallen in love with. And I get about five hours with a moderate projection. Next up is the beautiful Silk Tall 36 from Kaoli. And of course I featured Vanilla 28 in my first vanilla video. This uses a vanilla that smells very similar to Vanilla 28. So if you enjoy that, uh, I think you will enjoy this as well. But this has a fruity, fresh floral take on the DNA. This smells so feminine and beautiful. This could make a stunning year round fragrance. Um, this could be a signature scent. This to me personally doesn't smell special occasion or formal to me, but I do find it beautiful. Huge compliment getter, very likable, crowd pleasing. This features a fun, bright champagne, a juicy nectarine, although it isn't too fruity. It does bring in that fresh burst to the fragrance. The florals in here are very well blended. Nothing really jumps out to me except for like a soft delicate freesia what really takes over is that sugared musk the vanilla the pink praline I can't get enough of this scent and the sandalwood plays a supporting role just a nice likable creamy sandalwood used as a base note I wouldn't describe this as a woody fragrance overall and I do pick up on similarities to deja vu white flower but I much prefer this and I get really good performance from this about nine hours with moderate projection. For a more complex option for both men and women, you have to try if you haven't already, Nishane Ani. This is one of, I feel like, just the iconic staples when it comes to a unique 
edgy, cool, warm, spicy vanilla. This has a big blast of cardamom and ginger in here, so that won't be for everyone. If you're a beginner in fragrance, who knows how you'll feel about it. I personally thought this was fantastic even at the, the very beginning of my fragrance journey, if you will. Um, but we're all different. Some people have a little bit of a challenging time getting used to this one, but it smells rich, unbelievably wealthy, such a compliment getter as well. This makes a statement. It's bold. So we have the blend of warm spices from, as I said, the ginger, the cardamom, there's pink pepper. That quality does dial down the longer you wear this. So I do recommend giving it like a full wear test, get the whole feel of the fragrance. It also starts out with a punchy, fresh bergamot. Aside from the warm spices and this rich vanilla, I absolutely get a dominant ambery presence presence to this scent. It is so warm, perfect for fall and winter. That benzoin really makes itself known to my nose. And it also has a nice woody base of cedar, sandalwood, and there's also a bit of a patchouli lending a bit of an earthy quality. And if she wasn't for you the first time around, I encourage you to give it another go because I find that often I will hear people revisiting this and then it being an absolute love for them. So keep going back to it. High quality, warm, spicy, ambery vanilla in my opinion. Like for the fall and winter, this is a staple. It is. And this lasts so well, like 10, 12 hours, strong projection. The last one is the absolute ethereal goddess of the group, Zerjoff Dama Bianca. This is the Daphne Bridgerton Elven Queen Royal Duchess of Vanillas. Absolutely the definition of classy, sophisticated, elegant woman. And if you're not into gourmands, I would check this out. This has the most beautiful use of purple florals, lilac, iris, violet. I'm not usually into purple florals, but this takes my breath away. It is so well blended. It feels like a veil of innocence and beauty. I don't know. This is not sugary, edible, but provides this soft, delicate bit of sweetness. Clean white musk and brett. And this opens up with a really unique addition of a kumquat note. You don't see that too often in perfumery, but somehow that unique, crisp, fresh burst of this fruit really works nicely with these powdery purple florals and the vanilla. Can't recommend it enough. I feel like the most stunning princess of a woman when I wear Dom and Bianca, and I get about six hours with a moderate projection. So that wraps up my list of vanilla fragrances for today. Stay tuned because I will be, of course, featuring more vanillas down the road because I can't get enough of vanilla perfumes. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed, make sure to give this video a big thumbs up and make sure to subscribe down below if you haven't already. If you wanna see me in any more videos, I'd appreciate it so, so much. I hope you guys are having an amazing day and I hope to see you in my next video. Bye.